petrol and diesel cars have been serving us faithfully for well over a hundred years, but we all know they're not the future. But that kind of begs the question, what is? Well, what you see here is touted by many as just that. This is the Toyota Mirai, a car whose name even means the future. And along with the Hyundai iX35 fuel cell, it's one of the first two hydrogen powered cars to be available in the UK. It's common knowledge that more hydrogen cars are on their way, but how do they work? What are the pros and cons? And should you consider one as your next car? Over the next few minutes, we're gonna help you answer just those questions. If anything, the name's a little misleading, because although cars like this are called hydrogen cars, in fact, they're hybrids. And that's because they use two power sources, a regular battery and the hydrogen fuel cell. And both of them drive the electric motors that ultimately drive the car. We'll spare you the full details of the inner workings of that hydrogen fuel cell, but basically, when you put hydrogen in, the resulting chemical process creates a flow of electricity, and the only byproduct is water. Clever control systems decide which of those two power sources drive the car at any given moment. But essentially, you always start off with a battery driving the car, then once you're up and running, the fuel cell takes over, and when you want maximum acceleration, both of them work together. To extend the car's range, any excess energy that's generated by the fuel cell goes directly to charge the battery. And similarly, the car also has regenerative braking, so any kinetic energy that's lost as the car slows down is converted to extra charge in the battery. The chief benefit of a hydrogen car is its emissions, or rather, the lack of them. The only byproduct of the chemical process that powers this thing is water. Yep. No CO2, just good old H2O that's so pure you could drink it. Well, you could drink it if it didn't run through pipes that are covered with several thousand miles worth of muck from our filthy roads. Of course, a zero emission car is nothing new. And if you just wanted to drive around in something that kicked out no CO2, you could choose from one of a whole range of electric cars. But where a hydrogen car scores over an electric car is that it has a much longer range. This Mirai, for example, can do well over 300 miles. And we've heard of careful drivers who've got more than 400 miles from a tank full in an iX35. For that sort of mileage, hydrogen works out as no more expensive than petrol or diesel. Plus, as we're gonna go and see, it's much quicker to refill a hydrogen car than it is to recharge an electric car. Other benefits include the fact that hydrogen cars are exempt from the London congestion charge. And although the cars themselves are expensive, they incur company car tax at a very low rate. Another potential environmental benefit is that hydrogen can be produced on site at a filling station, unlike petrol or diesel, which need to be transported from a refinery. The most remarkable thing about driving a hydrogen car is there's nothing remarkable about it at all. You just get in, turn it on, and once the ready message appears on the dashboard, you're good to go drop the gear lever into drive is every bit as simple as a conventional automatic car. In fact, in many ways, it's even better to drive than a conventional petrol or diesel car. Because the electric motors deliver their full torque as soon as you ask for it, the car responds really quickly. And because there's no internal combustion engine, it does it all in near silence. Overall, the performance is very much on a par with what you'd expect from a conventional petrol or diesel engined car. All you'll ever hear is just the slightest whine from the electric motors and the car will happily sit at the legal limit on the motorway. There are no prices to pay in terms of ride and handling either. So overall, this is a really relaxing and relaxed way to get around. Essentially, filling a car up with hydrogen is every bit as easy as filling up one with petrol or diesel. And for a start, you have the same basic ingredients a big tank in the car, a pump to dispense the fuel, and a nozzle that you insert into a filler. So, when you rock up at the pump, all you have to do is pop open the fuel filler flap, remove the nozzle from the pump, and in this case it's done via a pin because it's all on account, but in the future, you'll better just swipe your debit card at the pump and pay there and then, and attach that pump to the car. Various checks then take place, and once the system is happy there are no leaks, the pump kicks into action automatically. While the car's filling, the display on the pump tells you what's going on, and when the car's full, you simply remove the nozzle 
and place it back on the pump. All in all, the entire process takes no more than three minutes, which is about the same as filling up a car with petrol or diesel. After all that good news, inevitably there has to be some bad news, and this is it. There are only a handful of places in the UK where you can fill up a hydrogen car. So few, in fact, you can count them on your fingers. And while that number is increasing, it's only increasing very slowly. As you might expect, most of those are in the southeast of England. So unless you happen to live or work near one of them, the sheer hassle involved in filling a hydrogen car up may make running one totally impractical. Perhaps the biggest question for a potential customer will be just how safe a hydrogen car is. But Toyota claims that the Mirai is every bit as safe as any one of its other products. The carbon fibre tanks that hold the fuel, for example, are extremely tough. And the car has several leak detectors and numerous safeguards to make sure that filling the car up with fuel is a safe procedure. The same is true about the iX35, which has gone through loads of tests, including crash tests, before it was made available to the public. It's important to remember that while hydrogen has had some pretty high profile failures in the past, industry now has several years experience of producing it and handling it in complete safety. Equally, petrol and diesel are hardly the safest things to have lying around, yet millions of us happily drive around in cars powered by them every day. There's no doubt that for some people, hydrogen cars are a realistic proposition for motoring in the 21st century. However, they do have some very serious limitations, not least the high price of the cars themselves, but also the limited refuelling network. That said, with the collaboration of car makers, energy companies and government, the barriers to the adoption of a hydrogen car will gradually be overcome. The cost will come down as the technology becomes more widespread and the refuelling infrastructure will expand. So hydrogen cars may not be the immediate future for most buyers, but be in no doubt, this is the future.